Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Seyed Sajjad Fazili, and <clears throat> uh, in the PhD student at the uh, Industrial and System Engineering Department of Wayne State University. Dr. Ruben Katechalam, Dr. Chinam, and Dr. Murat are supervising me during this project. This project is uh, about coming up with uh, charging network design for electric vehicle and study the realistic uh, data resources and also taking care of congestion uh, and uh, accessibility and uh, emission. So from the motivation perspective, uh, some of the advantages of uh, EVs are uh, Uh, our diversity in uh, energy feedstock and uh, reduction in uh, greenhouse gases and improving the air quality. In 2014, uh, Circola studied the uh, uh, direct and indirect policy incentives toward the uh, EV market share growth, and it seems that the public charger availability is the most important factor in uh, adoption of the EVs. So in this project, we are looking for two things. The first thing is, where should we locate the charging station? And what should be the number of charging station in each location? And what should be the type of charging station? We have three types of charging station, level two, level one, level two, and level three, which are different price-wise and charge charging time-wise. Uh, in general, there are two types of electric vehicle, the uh, PHEV, or uh, plugged-in uh, hybrid electric vehicle, and, uh, <coughs> sorry. and uh, battery electric vehicle. Uh, from uncertainty and data uh, analysis perspective, we got some data from the Department of uh, Transportation, the US Department of Transportation, and they reported that the uh, share of vehicles needing charging can reach by 5%. And uh, for PHEVs, it goes for 2% and 3% for uh, battery electric vehicles. Also, they noted that by 2022 and 2025, 3.5% uh, of fleet would be uh, the full EV or PHEV. So, this project is the continuation of uh, phase one, which was done in 2017. In phase one, uh, broadly, there are three streams of data. The OD pair base, based on the uh, household survey, and the driver behavioral uh, characteristic, and the final destination, which uh, determine the type of the activity of, uh, of drivers which involve and uh, based on the, these three streams of data, we estimate some of the parameters, uh, such as the arrival pattern, uh, willingness to walk of the driver, and dual time. So we add the uncertainty to these prom parameters. Additionally, we consider the operational constraint to the problem, and all of these would be, uh, become the input into stochastic mathematical modeling. And the output would be the size and the location of uh, charging stations. And in this way, we can estimate the uh, believability accessibility matrices. So most of the studies uh, focus on larger state uh, uh, wide networks, especially in highways, but not on urban area. But we took the different approach and we take a small community and tries to uh, study that uh, community. And uh, also most of the studies uh, uh, consider the demand as a deterministic part. But the, in reality, demand is uh, completely uh, stochastic. So uh, the real goal of phase one was uh, the developing a stochastic uh, uh, programming and uh, to, uh, to look at for uh, determining the location and size of the charging stations and assessing the uh, accessibility and uh, uh, livability metrics. Uh, also, uh, the, so there are some assumptions in phase one, all the charging places should be public charging uh, facilities, and all the charging type uh, are considered to be level two. 
So uh, in order to uh, investigate the efficiency of uh, the model, we consider a part of Detroit area, which attracts lots of traffic, and there are lots of different buildings in the, that area. We consider 32 parking location as a potential location for installing charging stations. Also, uh, for estimation, estimating the future market, EV market share, we consider two cases, conservative case and uh, optimistic case in our uh, uh, experiments. So we developed two stages of stochastic uh, modeling and we add uncertainty into the problem for the, and we used sample average approximation to solve the problem. And then uh, we, for larger scale uh, uh, instances, we used heuristic and uh, we also we performed the case study to uh, evaluate the model. So this uh, uh, work uh, presented in the Southeastern uh, Michigan Council of Government Agency, and also it was presented in Inform's uh, international meeting in 2016, and uh, also the manuscript was uh, accepted in IEEE Transaction on Intelligence Transportation Systems. Uh, here are some of the results from uh, phase one. Uh, as you can see, the percentage of accessibility, loss demand, and charging utilization in both uh, conservative case and optimistic case. And uh, also you can see the average hourly utilization in weekdays and weekends uh, for P equal to two and P equal to two, uh, six. Uh, P equal two means uh, we want to install in two locations out of 32 locations, we want to install just two, loca two locations uh, for installing charging uh, stations. Um, I think it's a wrong, uh, wrong presentation. But uh, okay, so uh, as I said, there are three levels of charging. Level one, which is referred to as home charging. You, you can even buy it and install it at home. It takes eight to 20 hours to fully charge the electric vehicle. We have level two charger, a little bit, bit uh, more expensive, and it takes around four to eight hours for uh, charging the electric vehicle. And also we have the DC fast charging uh, that can uh, fully charge your electric vehicle in just 30 minutes. Uh, and this is more expensive than uh, level one and level two uh, chargers. So in order to capture the charging patterns for EV users, we decided to use a choice modeling approach. Actually, for phase two, we, we uh, considered two broad things to add the phase one. The first one is choice modeling approach, and the second one is the multimodal transportation. The multimodal transportation means using uh, different modes of transportation to reach the final destination. Uh, modes of transport, transportation, I mean the walking, for example, bicycling, using bus, and uh, et cetera. Uh, okay. So, uh, as I said, different levels of charger uh, have different uh, price and different uh, charging time. Different people react to this price and uh, charging time differently. And so, so, in order to estimate the, uh, the impact of these variable, uh, variables, we use the drive interaction variables. In the literature, most of the uh, studies consider the linear relation between price and charging time and uh, other factors in uh, charging level. But uh, with using, for example, the rain charge, costs at home, and costs at the sub, uh, we can uh, capture the interaction between those variables. Then these variables uh, uh, will be the part of the uh, part of the utility function, and uh, by a mixed logic model we can estimate the effect of those variables, and then we can uh, calculate the probability of charging in each uh, station. Then these probabilities and those uh, and the utility function goes to our mathematical model, and then we can determine the type of the charging in each station. And finally, we can improve the accessibility. Uh, for estimating the utility functions variable, we used uh, uh, the study which was done by Wen et al. 2015, which is uh, reported to 
uh, transport uh, TRB research center. And uh, uh, yeah, we, we use their data to estimate our variables in uh, the utility function. Some of the choice decision we, which we used uh, are uh, charging price, maximum charging power, dual time, distance to home, electric charging range. And as I said, they, uh, they are estimated by mixed logic model. So in this project, first we build a mathematical model, but uh, since the, the choice modeling approach at nonlinear concert to our problem, we have to linearize the problem to uh, solve the problem in a more efficient way. And then uh, we construct the utility function, and, since, uh, and uh, then we should deal with the interactability of the problem. The problem size is very big. And uh, so we use uh, L-shaped decomposition method along with the, uh, uh, along with the callback function to uh, solve the problem in a reasonable, uh, reasonable amount of time. And at the end, we use the sensitivity analysis to uh, understand the relation between input parameters and output of the model. So uh, problems, uh, mathematical problems, notation, uh, I move fast here. Uh, so we have set of parking lots, we have set of time slots, charging types, we have uh, some activities of the driver, for example, shopping, a meal, a study, and uh, other activities. We have set of arrival and departure. We have some fixed parameters in the model, the number of candidate location for installing charging station, and also capacity of each, look, uh, each uh, charging station. We have a scenario-dependent parameter, which is the demand, and it's related to activity of the drivers and each timing slot. Uh, we have, uh, in the first stage, we have a binary variable, which determines the location of the charging station, when we have an integer variable, which uh, determines the number of charge number and type of the charging uh, station. In the second stage, we use the continuous variable to capture the proportion of demand that goes to each charging station and each typing chart, charger uh, typing chart. So the first stage, we determine where should we locate the charging station, and then what should be the number and type of each charger. And we want to maximize the uh, access to charging station. In the second stage, uh, we try to maximize the accessibility to charging a station, and we have the supply demand cons balance constraint, and as you can see, the choice modeling constraint, which is uh, nonlinear, and uh, also demand assignment to parking lots. Uh, Preliminary uh, initial results showed uh, we, we use three configuration. Uh, if we install just uh, level three charger. And if we install just level two charger, and if we install level all three uh, chargers, uh, the results, uh, the x uh, axis is budget that we have, and the y axis is the accessibility to charging a station. As we can see, by using all three chargers, we can have uh, more accessibility to charging a station. So, uh, and for if, uh, on the top of the phase one, we use choice model. I showed you, you the results. Now we want to add another aspect, which is the multimodal transportation. Uh, we want to study the effect of multimodal transportation and the combination of private EVs and uh, public transportation to uh, enrich our uh, for a modeling framework. Uh, I will explain it more in the next slide. Uh, here, as you can see, it's a, an example of multimodal transportation network. We have some origin and destination, and the uh, green circles are uh, EV charging station, and one can uh, uh, use different modes of transportation, for example, road and walking and bus and transit to get to the final destination. We want to locate the charging station in a way that one can use one can use the charging station, then use, for example, a bus to go to the final station. So uh, 
designing a multimodal network start with uh, start with uh, defining the link types like boarding and lighting uh, links and defining the node types such as OD pair, EV candidate sites, and also user choice behavior. And the next step would be determining the flow of passenger using the traffic information. And the third step would be the defining the feasible flow patterns that uses the flow balance constraint. And at the end, we want to locate the charging station and uh, determine the size of each charging station. So as I said, we are closely work with SEMCOG and we got some uh, data from uh, uh, SEMCOG agency. Broadly, three streams of data, the GIS data, the household survey data, and OD analysis data. Uh, there are many, many more uh, actually branches for these data, but uh, so uh, the expected outcome of uh, phase uh, two would be first uh, the framework by itself for designing electric uh, charging, cycle, uh, sh charging uh, stations. And then we want to, uh, we are considering the behavioral aspect of EV drivers in terms of uh, charging type, choosing what kind of uh, charging types and also how they, uh, they are re uh, react to multimodal transportation. What's their preference to using multimodal transportation? And in order to, and finally, in order to see what is the, uh, how the model can react in the real time, uh, we will do the uh, case study by uh, closely working with SEMCOG agency. And thank you.